Hi everyone, this is Hans Peter Up from Zero PM, and one of our more exciting deliverables is the alternative assessment database, which we hope will be used to find alternatives to PFAS and persistent mobile substances. And here presenting it is PhD student Romain Figuer, who was one of the lead developers of the alternative assessment database. So, Romain, please give us a walkthrough. Uh, thank you, Hans Peter, for the introduction. Um, so. Uh, I was thinking of uh, making a really short presentation to present how we thought about this database, what's the objective of it and how we built it. And then uh, we'll give a, a quick uh, guided tour uh, to the, through the database and uh, try to answer some typical question that it can uh, and that a user can uh, answer with it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to share the screen now. Uh, so first off, uh, to access the database, so you can access the database on the 0PM website and the results and 0PM alternative assessment database. So that's the web page here. And it's also accessible on Zenodo. Uh, for that, you can uh, scan this QR code over here. Um, so the main objective of this database is to provide, first off, a list of uses of PFAS and persistent mobile and toxic substances, as well as uh, information on the functions that are provided uh, by those substances in each use that we have identified. And then and the second step is to provide also a list of potential alternatives that are capable of providing similar functions for each use with the uh, uh, a hazard characterization as well as a description of a potential loss in performance and the market availability availability of the alternative. Uh, so the general structure of the database is like this. So we've uh, started the work um, by focusing on PFAS. Uh, so for we try to uh, identify all the use of PFAS that we subdivided into sub-uses and applications, and we build the whole database around the, uh, the concept of functional substitution. Uh, so to provide a bit more background information, the functional substitution approach has been defined in 2015 by, by Joel Tickner and colleagues, where they suggested that when one approached the issue of uh, substitution, one should consider three different levels of functions provided by a chemical. Uh, the first one is the uh, chemical function, that is like the technical function of a, of a substance that is defined by its physical chemical properties. So it could be a solvent, heat stabilizer, heat trans transferring agent, and so on. The second level is the end use function, which means that that's the purpose that a chemical substance can provide to a certain product or process. In other words, what does it bring to the product to have such a technical function? And the third level is the service. What, in other words, what does it bring to us as consumer or as society in general to have a product with a specific chemical function in it? What do, what do we get from it? Um, so that's what we try to determine for all the uses of PFAS. Um, so we, uh, oops, sorry, uh, we identify the, the uses of PFAS based on the general PFAS restriction that is being discussed at the European level under REACH at the moment and on previous work uh, like the uh, database of uses of PFAS that have been put together by uh, Liliana Gluge and colleagues back in 2020. And uh, each use categories, so we have 18 in the database at the moment, and each of those use categories were then subdivided into uh, sub uses and applications. And for each of these applications, that's what you can hear, see here again, uh, we identify the technical function of provided by PFAS, its end use, and the services, and then we can determine a uh, potential alternative based on this information. Uh, regarding the functions, uh, so the technical function were determined based on the OECD guidance on harmonized use categories that has been published in 2017. Uh, and then we determine the end use and services just based on common sense. We just ask ourselves, uh, what does 
what's the purpose of having such a technical function in the application in question that we are, we are evaluating, of course, based on the information that we could find in the restriction. So that's what we had. And then regarding the alternative, so that's the last step here. Um, we try to gather information on, so we try to identify them by name and cast number uh, if it's relevant. Then we try to determine the type of the alternative. Uh, is it an alternative substance, an alternative material, an alternative product, process, or technologies? Uh, we then try to determine the general chemistry of the alternative, especially for the alternative substances and the alternative materials. We try to determine whether they were organic synthetic chemicals, whether they were silicon based, natural based, inorganic, and so on. If uh, available, we we put uh, the whether the alternative has been assessed for PBT and whether there is a CLP classification. Uh, we also uh, screen the substitution support portal database, which uh, which is a portal that put together different lists of restricted substances. And those lists are coming from either uh, authorities or different companies or NGOs. So you can find the chemsex sin list in there. You can find uh, the restriction list under reach or the authorization list under reach and so on. In other words, if a substance is listed in, the, in this portal, it means that there is someone somewhere that thinks that the the there are potential, potentially some concern related to the hazard of this this particular substance. So we uh, put this information for the the alternative that are um, identified by a cast number in the database. And finally, we also provide some information on the potential change in functionality and uh, whether or not the alternative is available on the market uh, based on the information that we found in the PFAS restriction. Um, so that's uh, a quick overview, uh, a bit of a background, but now uh, I will show you what it looks like in practice. So once you download uh, the database, the database is uh, presents itself in the form of an Excel file. Uh, you have four Excel sheets. Uh, the first one is just uh, is listing uh, the references uh, where we found the information. Uh, to build up the database. Then on the second sheet, you have the list of PFAS uh, that we have identified so far, uh, that are identified by, by name, uh, cast number, and elemental composition if available. And then you have uh, the source of information. Um, then you can find a sheet on the functions. So for that's where for each application, of PFAS that we have identified, we specify the technical function and use function and service uh, of the, the PFAS in question. And then we also add sometimes uh, some information on the performance requirements, uh, what's uh, the requirements that an, uh, an alternative has to fulfill to be uh, considered as suitable uh, for the particular application. And then uh, again, the, the source of information. And then the last uh, Excel sheet is the alternative. Uh, that's the, I guess, the most interesting one. <clears throat> that's where we list all the alternatives that we have identified with the, the type, general chemistry, cast number, PBT assessment, CLP classification, and so on, as I just explained. Um, so that's what it looks like. And now I was uh, thinking, taking one example, uh, like the use of PFAS in fluorinated gases, for instance, and guide you how you can play with the, the filters uh, in the database to get some uh, key information. So the first question that one could ask is, what's, what are the PFAS used in a certain use category? So for that, uh, if we take the example of fluorinated gases, uh, you can filter here in column A, uh, look for fluorinated gases here. Uh, then you have a list of the subuses. Let's say that we are interested in refrigerants. So we want refrigerants and heat pumps. 
and then we want to know the ones that are used in, uh, let's say, domestic refrigeration here. And here you have, you end up with your list of PFAS, again with the names, the cast number, and the elemental composition. Or you can do the other way around. You may be uh, interested to know where a certain PFAS is used. So, for instance, if we take the example of uh, PTFE, you can type, search by cast number. So the cast number of PTFE is that one. And here are all the applications where we found that PTFE is used. So they are all listed here. And again, you can uh, filter out uh, which use categories you are in interested in. Uh, then you could ask yourself, what's the function of the PFAS in a certain use? So if we take the example again of uh, the freonated gases, so we filter the use here. Um, oh, sorry, no. Um, then uh, uh, sub-uses, we could uh, go for, again, refrigerants, uh, refrigerant pumps. Okay, and here you can see that the refrigerants, they are heat transferring agents that are used to either remove heat or provide heat to space. And according to the application, it could be just for uh, preservation of goods in the case where it's using refrig uh, refrigeration, or it could be to uh, cool the interior either of a building or of a, a car, depending on the uh, applications, of course. Uh, but we can also see, let's say, that the, the fermented gas is also used as foam blowing agent, for instance. And here, in those cases, they are used as formant or like uh, to help the expansion of uh, insulating forms and they use to ensure insulation of a certain uh, building structure or again, of a, a cow or so on. Uh, and then the last question that you can ask is uh, what are the alternatives available for a certain use? And here again, we can uh, go back, filter out the fluorinated gases, uh, and then see, let's say, first for the refrigerant, what do we have here? Uh, so these are like the um, alternatives that we have identified. And of course, those alternatives. Uh, for now, we, we don't really know at the moment whether they are like the suitable for all type of all the applications that we have listed. But just to be on the safe side, we have listed all of them. And then we believe that it's just a good first step for any uh, assessor. And then one can go a bit more into the detail of, let's say, com commercial refriger refrigeration to know whether carbon dioxide is uh, suitable or not, or whether um, butan is uh, suitable or not, and so on. But here you you can find the alternative that we have identified, uh, and in, in here some uh, information on the functionality and market update uptake. And then if we change the application, then we we'll want to look for the foam blowing agent. Here again. Uh, you can find some alternative substances or alternative uh, foam blowing agents, <clears throat> but you can also find alternative materials that are used. Uh, these are other insulation materials that could be used instead of the insulating foams. So, the, which could be still potential alternative to PFAS because then it will prevent the need of using PFAS as a foam blowing agent. And that's it. So, I hope that. Uh, everything is more clear now and that uh, this uh, database would be extremely useful for you. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yes, that's about it for me. Thank you. No, thanks, Romain. That was a very nice walkthrough. And uh, maybe we should also just mention some of the limitations of the alternative assessment database. It's a very good place, I think, to to start uh, uh, if we're looking for alternatives if uh, you're an industry looking to find them. But it doesn't say other things such as the potential hazards of yes. the things or maybe not everything to do with the supply, the functionality. So this is more considered a, a starting point yes. uh, uh, for further exploration. 
Yes, indeed, it's a very good point. Uh, we don't, we're not saying that the alternative that we are listing for specific application are like suitable for everyone. And it's uh, of course uh, the case by case. Uh, everyone should do their own assessment. But uh, indeed, we we hope to provide a first step and uh, and then um, and then take it from there. Hopefully. Yes, absolutely. And I think uh, I think this activity you've done already with. Uh, digitizing all these uh, PFAS documents and alternative assessments saves a lot of people a lot of work uh, going forward on the quest. And then we'll hopefully very curious to see uh, how, 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 how much it's used. And I'm sure it'll be vital for substituting PFAS in future. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Romain. And uh, thank you. And from 0 p.m., bye bye. <laughs> 0 p.m. Zero pollution of persistent and mobile substances. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under grant agreement number 10103675